So, ladies, thanks ever so much for coming in today. It's always weird having these conversations with people filming you. As you know, through lockdown, you and I did a couple of these at least. Before I start, one thing you're proud of, one thing you want to make happen. So, one thing that I'm extremely proud of is the way that Newport City Homes, as an organisation, pull together to be able to come through the COVID pandemic. The way that all of our colleagues really embraced what was happening, um, pulled out all the stops to make sure everyone was safe, went above and beyond, not only within their own individual services, but across wider communities as well. And if anything, I think that just shows how much how much our colleagues really live and breathe and feel all of our values that are, that are, are being shared even further across the organization because it shows that people really care and want to make a difference and just want to make sure that everybody is safe and happy in their communities and i think i'm just so proud of us for all of our colleagues and for us as an organisation and the changes that everybody's made and the way that everyone's kept it together, I think it's just fabulous and it makes me really, really proud to be associated with Newport City Homes after everything what we've been through when people have come through the other end and are still smiling. Yeah, and, that, and that's fantastic. And I think for me, it's very much building on Nicola's legacy um, the board and the organisation is on a fantastic journey. Um, we've got a number of new board members, which is really exciting. And, and in a way, I, I'm enjoying that thought of new board members joining at the same time as me. But I think what we've got to be very careful of is that we don't lose the value of the journey so far, but that we use that as a foundation to build on and move forward. So um, thank you for that. Big shoes to fill, but I'm really excited about what lies ahead. If you were a colleague out in the community today fixing a repair in someone's home, one of our neighbourhood managers up at, at 195, why should the chair of Newport City Homes or the board matter to you? So the re I, this is a really good question because I always kind of try to explain things. I give it the dad test and I think, does will my dad understand this? Because if my dad gets it, then I know everyone will get it. And for, so for me, why, why is the board important? Why is the chair important? And the board is important because we're here to make sure that Kerry and the leadership team do everything that they say they're going to do. That as an organisation, we deliver the things that we say we're going to deliver. And as an organisation, we be the best that we possibly can be. So we're there as a support network around the leadership team. We're there to make sure that we're doing what we should be doing. But more importantly for me, and this is, I think, what why the board of Newport City Home stands out, is because everybody believes in the organisation, believes in Newport, and believes we can make a difference. And it's not about me or it's not about the board, it's not about the organisation, but it's about the next generation of people that are coming up behind us. And that's, what's, that's, that's Newport City Homes. That's what we're here for. We're for our customers, for our residents, but we're here for the future. And so that's what the board is there to drive forward. So wonderful leader that's coming in. Um, oh my goodness, they're big shoes, aren't oh, they? They are very, They are they big are shoes. So just so people get to know you so why why this role why were you interested in joining um the wonderful newport city homes i suppose for all the reasons that nicola has just outlined why it's such a, a fabulous and amazing organization organization to work with um so you know we we've worked closely in the past um, I followed Newport City Homes and it, it's an exciting organisation, an attractive organisation. I found it very attractive, forward thinking, dynamic, great leadership. You know, I hold you in the highest regard, Kerry, and I'm saying that on, on camera now as well. Um, so <laughs> no, no, no pressure there. Um, but, um, you know, the, the feel of the organisation very much fits with my values um, it's something I've been very much interested in doing, becoming involved in a board and um, the opportunity to take on the chair role 
is an amazing opportunity. So um, I'm really thrilled to have been offered the opportunity. Looking forward to working with the fantastic board that Nicola has had the chance to work with and to work with you in the executive team. You're a forward-thinking organisation, a progressive culture, um, and to be part of the next stage of your journey is going to be really exciting. So if you're one of our colleagues, maybe out in the community, maybe in the office with us today, maybe working from home, um, did I hear from Nick? What if, if this was September 2023, looking back, Linda Scona has been chair for a year. What what would you like them to have to see? What what difference would you like them to have identified with? Um, building on what building, is obviously yeah, a great yeah, legacy. Absolutely, um, I think the board very much um, we, we we've got a, a responsibility to role model not only the values of the organisation, but the aspirations of the organisation. So, you know, if I, in a year's time, can think, well, over the last year, I hope that people, the executive team, people across the organisation, feel that the board is supporting the organisation to take the risks that, you know, that uh, Nicola has mentioned, um, not to be foolhardy, but to take those risks that um, I think are essential if... if NCH is going to move on and, um, you know, take the next step in, his, in its journey. Um, to feel that, for people to feel that they can work autonomously, they can make decisions, they, knowing that they'll be supported and that that support goes, you know, right across the organisation, including the executive and, and the board as well. And I, I think that brings with it, and it's, it's very much what Nick has told has talked about um, a confidence in the business. And I think when um, we're all facing difficult times and our customers are facing very difficult times, you know, we thought that with when you see changed and with the pandemic, you know, that, that, that times were difficult. I think the times that are ahead of us all now, um, particularly around cost of living, are unprecedented. Um, so more than ever, um, we all need to feel confident to make decisions, to work autonomously, knowing that we're going to be that we're going to be supported in what we're doing, um, and to have opportunities each and every person across the business to develop personally, um, to develop their career in Newport City homes, so that they can grow as the business grows, um, because supporting our customers is going to be more important than ever. Um, supporting our customers and feel confident in doing that um, so that people can keep their homes, feel safe in their homes, um, and you know that there's all the other amazing things that we'll be doing. But that is very much at the core of, of what, we, what we'll be doing and focused on probably more than ever through the difficult times that are ahead. Um, so questions to both of you, really. You're saying goodbye, you're saying hello, 50% of the board is changing. So what are the big issues that you hope Linda picks up on? What are the big issues you're going to want the board to be picking up on, given the operating environment that we're working in? That's, I think that's mainly one for Linda to pick up because it, it is the future, isn't it? And I think the, the existing board members that we've got are absolutely amazing. They are, have skill sets are absolutely fabulous. And the new board members coming on as well, brilliant, fantastic makeup of individuals. And I suppose it's just making that work to the organisation's advantage and especially in light of the challenges that are coming, coming forward. And I feel really, oops, I feel really bad with you to say it over to you <laughs> because it's a massive, massive task yeah. that's, that's on the horizon. Yeah, I mean, I think you've, um, you, you know, working together, you, you know, that journey is very clear to people. And I think that's really important for existing board members, new board members. Um, and we were talking earlier about more than ever that need to work collegiately to, to 
for that collective ownership of decisions that are made. And, um, you know, from having met the new board members and the current board members, I know that that spirit is there within the board. And I think that's something that you have engendered within the board during your period as chair. Um, and that makes the, the job much easier for me in, in stepping in to your shoes, big though they are, um, in terms of <clears throat> how we will work together. And I think, you know, you, you'll probably recognise that there have been difficult times. You know, we were talking earlier about the impact of Grenfell and the very difficult conversations that you needed to have as a board and with the executive. Um, you know, I, I think I mentioned universal credit, the outcome of the, the fallout from the pandemic, really, really difficult times for the people we work with, but also for our colleagues as well. Um, and we know now with the cost of living crisis that is, is coming, um, I think that they are going to be unprecedented. Um, there are going to be unprecedented times ahead in terms of difficulty, more so than anything we've seen in the past. And for that reason, I think we're all going to need to be very confident in our decision making, in our risk taking. You know, our colleagues are going to need to feel that they're able to work autonomously, they're able to make decisions, confident that they'll be supported by the executive, by the board. Um, and we need to um, role model those trusting behaviours that, you know, I know you have engendered right across the business and um, you know I think in doing that um, and with people feeling they're able to develop within NCH develop their careers um, be very confident in what they're doing knowing that they're supported that is how we are going to continue as an organization to make a difference to the lives of people um, our, our residents our tenants our customers and the people who live in the communities that we work in um, because, you know, the pressures for people are going to be something that we've not seen before. And nothing is more important than somebody being able to keep their home, um, knowing that they'll be safe and secure, their home will be well um, repaired, that everything is being done to minimise uh, the cost of running that home as well, um, and that they will be supported when they face difficult times because people are going to face really difficult times. So um, that, that's what is, is exciting for me, knowing that I'm coming to work with a team that is passionate about making that difference, passionate about supporting people. And you know, the, our development programme is very important, but also um, the, we, we need to be looking at what we can do to our existing homes to minimise the cost of running those homes for, for you know, the, the people who live there. So um, there are big challenges ahead, lots of opportunities within that, um, lots of opportunities in the ambitious development programme to create job and training opportunities and apprenticeships um, for our customers, um, lots of opportunities for people to develop, for us to reap the benefits of strong partnerships um, so, you know, we need to keep our chins up, be very positive about the role that we play because it's such an important role, but recognise that the most vulnerable people are going to be badly impacted by the challenges that lie ahead. Yeah, I think that's such a good um, summary of the operating environment. And, you know, we, when I got back off holiday, you in our catch-up, Nick and I were talking about... And, in effect, you, you've articulated it much better, Linda, but it was cost of living, post-COVID, we're still getting used to it. Uncertainty is greater than it ever has been. Oh, and ah, there's still a housing crisis. There was pre-COVID, there was one through and there is one at the moment. When we were talking, I don't know if you remember this, I'd said to you, you are Newport, you're your part of Newport. We've got other board members who are also from Newport and identify with their bit of Newport. What advice would you give to Linda in relation to get it for, in her role as chair and as the, uh, the leader of that board in getting to know the city 
that 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 influences everything that we that we do how, how can linda ensure that with 50 percent of the board being new they connect quickly with what what nch is about our colleagues as well as with the communities we serve so it's really important and hopefully as part of a wider induction plan that there's opportunities to get out into our communities and just have a little drive around but at the same time for new board members there's no there's nothing stopping people from actually just jumping in the car one afternoon and having a little drive around some communities just seeing what's going on in some of the community centers and that's a real good way of finding out what's the because that's what that's the the heartbeat is what goes on some of the, we've got fantastic community centres all, all across Newport, Bettis, Pill Mill, Beaufort Centre, so, and then brilliant, brilliant support networks that in wrap around them and just popping into some of those to have a cup of tea with people. We know over the years we've not done enough to communicate the, the, what the board are doing with our colleagues, our customers yeah. and our communities, yeah. and similar, giving colleagues, customers and communities the opportunity to meet with the board because inviting someone to a board meeting is like inviting them to an yeah. interview. Yeah. Um, walking the streets yeah. of yeah. Somerton, of Ringland, of, and actually bumping into a neighbourhood manager, one of the guys that are out in the vans, that's when you really see those values behind you yeah. put into action. And you hear the comments from local members about how things are feeling. So we, we do need to give thought to, because our board don't want to do the job that our fabulous colleagues are doing, yeah. but they need to understand yeah. it. And we, we've, we, we need more, we need to keep trial and error to try and get that right. Yeah. Because uh, what is the right balance? What, what board members love is going out with a lot of the time we'll we'll get a minibus and we'll just load the minibus up and we'll drive around and pop out and we'll just see who we see yeah, yeah. and they've always gone yeah. down very very well yeah, yeah. no I, I i agree with you and i i mean that's that's part of the role that i know i'll enjoy because it's something that i've enjoyed in other roles that i've had in the past and i, I agree with you having a chat with somebody it's something that you never forget and quite often it's something that they never forget as well. And um, I think if, if you are going to have an organisation that has um, a trust-based approach to leadership and a culture where people, it's not about um, having to earn trust, it's about where trust is given, then actually being visible and getting to know people is very much part of that. And if we, if we don't do that, we're, we're getting something wrong. Yeah. I suppose last question from me and then anything from you two. So we've worked very, very closely over the years through professional and personal ups and downs, um, hurdles, laughs and tears from both of us along, along the way. And, and, and I say that very openly because that, if you care about a place the way I think we care about this place, then emotion comes with that. And hey, yeah. Why, why are we ashamed of emotion? Why, why, why are we not allowed to laugh or cry? Because when we're sad, that's what we do. But what should I do differently <laughs> in supporting Nicola other than say, Sports no, you Linda. can't, in Linda, sorry. Not yeah. Linda. Get her name right. <laughs> <laughs> Point one. Point one, yeah. Um, but I know to, yeah, j just to, make sure that that openness and transparency keeps keeps coming keeps giving and i'm sure it will because we've worked together yeah. in the past yeah. or you know albeit in a very different relationship yeah. but yeah do i need to do anything different the communication absolutely and and that's always been a constant hasn't it and the engagement communication between the two of us and i think that's really really important um but something i think that you could do carrie is just maybe just take a little bit of a step back sometimes and not be so much of a control freak about stuff. <laughs> but that's just part of you. So, and, but then there's qualities with, that come alongside that as well, as well, well as other things that maybe just needs a little bit more support. <laughs> but, but I just, the, the biggest, the, the, one of the best, the communication, the engagement, keeping up to date with things. And that's, that's the, maintaining that is what builds everything else. Yeah. And, and, and I think that's the best thing to keep doing, 
but yes, Linda, don't, yes. Kerry can, Kerry's fabulous, amazing chief executive. So he's getting a little bit excited about it. She says, I get excited, but Kerry gets excited <laughs> about things. <laughs> you Kerry what's um, one thing that you you would particularly like me to do or be or would or wouldn't would would yes yeah um, I guess it's building on oh, this sounds dreadful because you're gonna come in and at interview you were appointed because of the wealth of experience the values that you openly displayed so we want all that newness to come, and I think it's really important. So the one word I want from you is ask us why. We were talking about this yesterday, actually, in my hand. Ask us why, because I don't want NCH to be the organisation that does things because we've always done it that way. Yeah. We have to be the organisation that does it this way because that's the best we can be. Yeah. And if the best we can be at the moment is doing something different, then we need to do that yeah. differently. Um, you know, and, and that covers everything from um, the fact that, um, yeah, that uh, Nick mentioned, you know, uh, there isn't a board paper that you will see that I haven't read. Well... And there's reasons for that because... And I'd, I'd want that to be the case. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, but I'd worry if you hadn't read that. But the <laughs> reasons for that are in the past there was a different working relationship with the board. Maybe the quality of the information that the board had wasn't where it was at. And we had a steep learning curve to get it to that point. I've got fabulous exec directors and leadership team, yet... I will still read every last paper that will come to the board before it comes. And um, that, so we need to, cha I, I'm increasingly challenging myself. The, the exec team relatively new, um, you know, w within the last four or five years, the entire exec has, has turned over. And, and it's the challenge, they, I don't want to say this because this on camera will mean they'll do it more, but the challenge they bring to me has been the best part of me working with them yeah. because we do need to do everything. You, yeah. You've been a chief exec. You're in senior leadership roles. The people that tell you that's right all the time or your views are, they agree with you, aren't the people you learn from. No. The people you learn from are the people that ask you a question that you don't know the answer to yeah. because yeah. having to work out an answer together is where is where that true partnership comes yeah. from. So if I think of some of the challenges we've had, and, and personal, professional, about individuals, about teams, about the city, about partnerships, the bits I remember aren't the bits that all went right. The bits I remember were the really, really difficult things where we did yeah. laugh and cry and get upset, but we overcome overcame it so I think yeah if, if there's one ask for me is that uh, keep asking why because they, there's that theory isn't it 100 days and you're institutionalized yeah, yeah. don't get institutionalized no, no okay um, because, I'll make you a promise that yeah, I won't get institutionalized, get institutionalized. <laughs> right um, it's it's easy sometimes to think what particularly on the things that you're good at yeah. it's easy to think we're good at it so we don't have to think about it actually being good at something and actually making it even better that, yeah. that can be a quick win yeah sometimes even if things are brilliant if you don't break them and look to make them better um you don't move on yeah and i think you know the status quo is sometimes it's a really sad position for an organization to be in and i know that newport city homes is not that kind of organisation yeah. because you've only got to look at some of the very brave decisions that you've made um, to know that you don't just say, no, we'll, we'll do nothing because that's, that's low risk. That's the easiest decision to make. But actually, you do break the mould and move on. And, and that's what makes it such an exciting, dynamic and innovative organisation. Um, sometimes quite scary and you know the risk is something Excuse that me. you know yeah 
but um, that's what makes the, the journey exciting. And I think without an exciting journey, without an, uh, an exciting and positive vision, um, you know, all of us need to be engaged around that because without that, yes, it's lovely to work with colleagues you enjoy working with, but if you don't wake up in the morning and think, you know, I want to get in there and get on with this. When Nick took over as chair, we were delivering on, bizarrely, the first five-year strategy for Newport City Homes, even though we're, what, 13, coming on for 14 years old. And that was called Vision 2020, from 2015 up to yeah. 2020. Yeah. And if I'm honest, whilst there was a great deal of ambition in that, we've discussed this, Nick. Actually, Vision 2020 was about, or 2020 Vision, God, I mean, calling it the wrong thing, was about getting the basics right. Yeah, yeah. And we made great progress on the basics. We're now halfway through Strategy 2025. The, uh, your first board meeting that you chair will be looking at the refresh of the strategy. So we're not throwing the baby out with the bathwater, it's the refresh of the yeah. strategy. And it focuses, not unsurprisingly, on our customers, on our communities and on our colleagues. But the difference between those two strategies is rather than getting the basics right, strategy 2025 has been about the board's ambition to fly, to seriously do something about the housing crisis, to have mixed tenure properties, to recognise that a number of our our communities across the city need major regeneration. The investment the board have already agreed into Summerdon being a case in point. But it goes beyond Summerdon. There's other areas we need investment. And we've got, to work, we've got to box clever to get the right financial packages that will enable us to, to deliver on some of that vision. And yet we're doing all of that in the environment you two have outlined today cost of living crisis, uncertainty. Is Putin switching the tap off on gas or switching it on or off today? You know, in, in, in the time that we've been talking today, what's happened in the national press, you know, what, what, what things are happening so quickly, the environment within which we're operating. But with that said, I guess the future is about us flying. And in us flying, it's about doing the right thing for our customers, for our communities, and for our colleagues. Yeah. Nick always brings me back to colleague, because in your view, and in my view, and, and, and I know it's your own, yeah. if our colleagues are content and buy into what we want to achieve, the customer and the community bit sorts itself out. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah. the future is about continuing to support our, our colleagues, yeah. because without them, we're, we're not delivering on yeah. any of it. Yeah. And because they know best, don't they? Yeah. They absolutely know best, you know. So we would be naive if we didn't listen to what people who are actually speaking to the customers more regularly and in the communities and really understand what's needed for the future. Um, if you know, these these are the, our colleagues who need to shape the vision for the future, aren't they? And I I agree with you. And I I think it, you know. There is a temptation when times are difficult to batten down the hatches, to focus, and, and we know that we need always to focus on the things that matter. We talked about people maintaining their tenancies, keeping people safe in their homes, keeping our colleagues safe. Nothing matters more than that. Nothing matters more than people going home safely to their families every day. But we also need to be brave and we need to be smart. And um, and I you know and we talked about risk taking earlier, um, and I think the opportunities are there to be seized, and if if people are confident, if if we're all confident within the business um, to take those um, risks and to make those decisions that enable us to seize opportunities, I think you'll absolutely achieve what you want to achieve and your vision for the organisation. Um, and that's the collective vision with the board as well, isn't it? So, um, yeah, I think, um, and one final point, I think that partnerships are going to be more important than ever because we can't do all of this alone. We need to work smarter. We need to do things differently. And working in partnership with organisations that share our values, um, I think that's going to be really important in the future.
Yeah. So that's tomorrow. What will we do on Monday? <laughs> I don't know, what are you doing on Monday, <laughs> Kerry? <laughs>